You have probably heard that programmers should have a problem-solving skills, but what does that mean? Uh, for me personally, just being and grown up is solving a list of problems. We are all doing it, right? The lack of food in refrigerator is something you need to solve somehow. So what does that mean in software development? I personally had no idea what it meant when I started 15 years ago, so I tried to sum up in this video uh, what I think I am doing and thinking in order to solve the everyday programming problems. So here I have this uh, autocomplete here that is uh, searching for the street name if you type uh, great street or whatever, and it accesses our server dynamically. So our partners would then filter by city and the zip code, and then they would find the street that they are interested in. And this is working great, there are some more fields there, and all was good until the requirements changed. So the girl who worked with our partners or our clients asked me to restrict this uh, drop-down here so that users cannot write anything else in this field except that the values that are coming from the database, the ones that we see here. And that is a valid request, however, she gave me a possible solution in this case, but not a final solution. And so the first step to solving this problem is to really understand the problem and not just to understand what people are asking you to do, but also why is that actually a problem? Because if we look at the angular material that I'm using here, we can actually see that in their examples, they don't have any example where you are limited to the autocomplete values and there is no mentioning of that in the API. So what can we do now? Well, I can say that it cannot be done because the library uh, we are using it does not support that and that she has to think of something else, but that is not very professional, is it? So we try to understand the problem and by understanding the problem, we can actually conclude that here in this example, the actual problem is that uh, this is also an ordering form, not just a search for the addresses. And our partners can only use those addresses that we have in our database, which means that uh, some street 51, for example, is not a valid value in this case, not a valid address because we only have the street 50. And now by knowing that, by understanding why this is a problem and all the reasons behind it, we can think of some alternatives. We can think of plan C and then maybe a plan B and then we can start researching the plan A, the main solution. So the plan B in this case will be the easiest technically and probably the ugliest for the user is to make something uh, perhaps easier to implement technically but a bit harder to use like a two drop boxes, the first one where you would uh, type to limit the results and the second one where they would actually select the address manually. So like a search in the list example, because the data is coming from the server, we need to fetch one limited list and then the user can only select something from that list. If that is, however, not acceptable for the end users, then we can try with other plans, the plan C, but let's try with the plan A, the main thing that we are asked to do. Now, we would Google for something like the Angular Material Autocomplete uh, Limit Choice to Results. And here, somewhere between these answers here, is actually the request, the official request on the GitHub, saying that basically this is a request for a feature. And if we would uh, read or just scroll through that, we can see that some of the latest answers say that uh, this feature is deadly needed, which means that it's not implemented. There is some workaround, but basically this feature is not supported and probably will never be supported because it's been open in 2017. So what I can do is I can maybe fork the Angular material and try to expand it myself. However, this is a bit important thing for us because invalid orders are being submitted and going through the whole submission pro process in the Angular would take a lot of time and a lot of effort. But then what I would do is, for example, after reading all of these suggestions, I might have found something that works, but I would also try to find, for example, a replacement in some sort of uh, another library by removing the material from the results. And here I can see that the prime ng actually has the autocomplete uh, component. And then I can go and check the documentation and what they're talking about it, but I can also go to the prime ng or the prime faces uh, main website and I can go over their demo and uh, open the autocomplete because that's what we are interested in. And I would, for example, glance over this documentation and check all the parameters that they have. And what I notice is that they have this for selection parameter here, which when present, it removes the manual input if it does not match the suggestions to force the only accepting values from the suggestions, which is basically exactly what we need. So I might say that this is a solution, that I have solved it. However, I'm not sure if this is the plan A. It might be the plan C, for example. 
because there are some implications. If I introduce another library, it will be a heavier code, a more complex maintaining, the updates are not a very pleasant experience with JavaScript. So to introduce another library, to pollute our code base, to make it a bit harder to maintain, this might be actually the plan C. So then we already have some alternatives to introduce a new, li new library, the plan C, and then the plan B, for example, is to have some alternative interface to show to the user rather than the drop down that they ask for. However, we have now found a new term, the force selection, something that I didn't Google. And if I would try to Google for, uh, for example, Angular Material Autocomplete force selection, I might get some new results. So if I would open several of those, and if I would glance over them, I can see that one suggestion is to actually use the blur event for the autocomplete or the option selected. And that way we can just check if the selected option is the one from the results that we got from the server. And I might as well check all the other explanations and other suggestions here and evaluate how complex they are, how much time they take to implement, uh, how obvious they are to me at least, if there are maybe some hack that might break when the library is updated, or if it's something that's officially supported and that is obviously supported like this, uh, like this option select here that we have. It is pretty obvious that this uh, will not be removed from the API because it's a very useful uh, event. And we could also ask this question ourselves on Stack Overflow, but I would usually recommend that as the last option because it can happen that we basically never get an answer or it might take a lot of time and by the time the answer comes, we might as well implement the plan D already. And chances are that uh, somebody already had a similar problem that you and that there is a solution to it. And I dare to say in 90% of the cases, you just need to be persistent and a bit creative to find it, to, to Google for different terms, to ask for a different problem and you might come to your solution. And I think that for this particular form, I actually solved it to the answer that suggests to watch for the blur event or the panel closing action, and then to actually compare if this entered value is one of the values that came from the server. And if they are different, I would just empty this field. However, I'm pretty sure that this uh, answer was not available when I made this solution a few years ago. So it took me probably several hours to figure out all the hooks and to find all the values and to connect different things in Angular especially because in our form all these fields are linked, so I would need to check each of those and remove each of those. So a seemingly simple thing from a user's perspective, just to limit to these uh, values, it took me quite a bit of time to solve, maybe an entire day. And I can show you a lot of examples like this, the missing cookie in uh, Internet Explorer, for example, or missing header with Laravel backend or whatever, but this is pretty much how a working day of a programmer looks like at least in my case and people around me. Sometimes you immediately know what you need to do and that comes with experience. So you might skip a lot of steps from above, but here are some things to consider when dealing with uh, solving these problems. First thing, as we talked, is to understand the problem, and not just the solution. You are the guy making solutions, so you need to know the problems. In this example, I was asked to make a dropdown but that is just one of the possible solutions. And it's usually something that non-technical person came up with best intentions to help me. But sometimes things could be solved without even writing a single line of code. I get a lot of requests from people from our company, both uh, technical and non-technical, where people would ask me to, for example, install a cookie on the website. So people have a problem and then try to find a solution. And then they would ask me to implement what they have found, what they think is the right solution for that. And that is why it is very important to know the actual problem and not just a suggested solution. I would also take into consideration the urgency of the request and the long-term importance so that I can prioritize what needs to be done first and how I should prioritize the solutions. Some things like showing some uh, important message on the website, those are urgent, but they're not very important in long term. This drop down, however, it's not that urgent, but it is very important to the project in the long term. So it's important to do it correctly and properly so that the maintenance is much easier later if uh, database change and the way we communicate with users change. And to figure out if something is really important long term, you can see the long term cost of that requirement. Maybe it's better to use more time on research on development now 
especially if the feature is critical and not that easy to replace later when people start using it. And that is why it is important to have multiple solutions. Because you can even analyze prioritize yourself after a, a few times you talked to your boss or to your client for suggestions. Because we are hopefully not paid to do what we are told, but we are paid to solve problems. So our boss or our client is hiring us to solve some problems for them. So when we go to talk to our boss or our client, they should be able to make a decision on what is the important way forward and not what and how we should implement that specific feature. That is why we have a plan C and plan B and plan A and we can present those to the people who have a wider overview than us, a team leader, project manager, tech lead, client or a boss, then they can make a good informed decision with hopefully our recommendations. Because each solution has a pros and cons, so try to make sure that you can explain all the benefits and all the negatives of each solution. And by the way, once a decision is made, then you just do it. If you don't agree with the decision, you can state it out loud, but again, once a decision is made, you do what you are asked to, to the best of your capabilities. You cannot allow yourself in a professional setting to become a brat or to uh, seek a revenge or to be the I told you so guy. That won't get you far. No one wants to hear that or work with people like that. At the end of the day, people work with other people and it's your best interest that people actually enjoy and want to work with you. Also, start with uh, the simple solutions. Usually the simpler solutions are better. I've, I've seen so many complex functionality uh, built and abandoned because they are too complex to build and also too complex to use. Look at the most popular services and websites around you. The Amazon, they have one click purchase. The Google with two buttons for search. The YouTube, for example, has a click to play and that's it. So keep it simple and stupid. And always have in mind that projects are generally before people. Now people would often, especially in web projects, they want to be the designers or they want to have things their own way just because they would like to play with colors or whatever. Just to get the website the way that they would like it to be. And sometimes forgetting that the website is not for us employees, it is actually for the customers. And that is why a decent people skills can help you so that you can communicate and explain and also educate people around you, get them to think the way an average customer would think. And of course, it's a good uh, thing to be a team player and sometimes just do something if people ask you that will perhaps not affect the customer and the projects, but always have the interest of the projects and your users in mind. If you disagree, try your best to explain why. And remember, it is not important to win to win any argument. It is important to educate people so that they know why are some things the way they are and why are some solutions not the, always the obviously best solution. And the final thing is to go with the solution and not the tool. And that is something we programmers often forget. Because as I shown in this example, uh, the Angular, for example, here is the limiting factor. However, if I had to make this as a web component in a React, for example, to get this to work like, like uh, expected, it would be just fine as long as it fits in the bigger picture. Of course, we consider the maintenance cost and how easy it is to change in the future, especially when new people are to join the project, etc. So I kindly ask you to share this video on some Facebook group or Reddit or wherever you think someone might benefit from it, as I've seen a lot of people not exactly knowing how to approach the problem solving and how a real day in the life of a programming looks like. And now, if you will excuse me, I have to explain to my boss that this drop-down is actually a feature and uh, not a bug. 